So as I mentioned, I'm going to go back and forth between unconditional GANs and then conditional GANs because one of them is pushing uh, the methodology, the unconditional is giving you new objective functions, it's giving you new neural network structure, etc. And the other one is for applications when you do conditional GANs. So let's see some applications and let's apply GANs to the task of image to image translation. What are the applications or what are the type of data sets that you're gonna see? For those of you who know about segmentation, you know that you go from an image and then you segment it. You say, this is a car, this pixel is a car, that pixel is a road, uh, that pixel is a tree, that pixel is a traffic light, etc. So you label them and these are your label data. Now you're switching the role of your labels and images. Okay, that was your input previously, this is your output. Now you switch the role. This is your input, generate images for me. You can go back and forth between the aerial to map and map to aerial. You can go from uh, labels to facade. It's very similar to labels to street scenes. You can do colorization. You have a black and white image and you want to look at it in terms of colors. You can apply it to self-driving cars. So for self-driving cars, you're not gonna have enough data. If you want to have enough data to train and run network, there are estimates that it's gonna take you uh, 300 years to have enough data to train the type of neural networks that you need for self-driving cars, okay? Because the reality is messed up. Sometimes it is rainy, sometimes it is, uh, it's sunny, sometimes there is fog, etc. So this framework is gonna help you translate between images. You can translate between day to night, between uh, summer to autumn, etc. Summer to fall, you name it. And now you're gonna have enough data, hopefully. And this is useful for fashion. You draw and sketch or the edges of a foot and then you translate it to photo. So what is the framework? You're gonna have a loss function coming out of a discriminator. So the discriminator is giving you your loss function. And this is conditional. And what you're conditioning on is X. So X is your, in this case, this is your semantic uh, labels. This could be your input, the other inputs, etc. So X is your input. Y is the output. This is the ground truth. These are the real data. And G of X and Z, Z is your latent variable. And then given X, you are generating images. So these are gonna be your generated images. And basically you are training G. You are training a function that takes you from X to Y. And then you're discriminating between real and fake. That's gonna give you your GSR. At the same time, because you know your ground truth, you can put a reconstruction loss. You can say that I want the output of the generator to be close to the real data. So now you have two losses. One is coming out of L1 loss. The other one is coming out of the discriminator. And then you can just add them up properly with a hyperparameter that you can choose based on your validation data. There is a study in the paper which says how important is it to put X here? And that's basically an unconditional variant. And it turns out that that is actually important, okay? It helps. So this is a systematic study and there are em empirical reasons for putting X here. Basically conditioning your discriminator on X as well, on the input as well. And there is also X here, X comma G. Okay, visually speaking, this is what is happening. You take X, you push it through your generator, that's gonna give you a generated image. And why am I removing Z now? Because Z, whenever you have an input, Z could be your uh, dropout noise. So your dropout variables could, have, could act as Z. So there is no need to put Z as an input. Dropout is gonna give you the randomness that you need. So you take X, you push it through G, that's gonna give you G of X. You take G of X and X, and you push it through your discriminator because now your discriminator depends on X as well. This is exactly what we discussed now. And the discriminator is gonna discriminate between fake and real. It's gonna know that some images are real, some images are fake. Why are the real data, GX are the generated data. As I promised, you can apply it to colorization. So this is the colorized version of the images on the right. These are the ground truth, and these are what L1 plus C GAN is gonna give you. You can do 
map to Arial. So these were your data. These are the predictions of the model now. These are generated images. You can do, you can have an L1. This is basically this problem that you were mapping your labels to streets. If you use L1 only, things are gonna become blurry. If you add L1 plus CGAN, you're gonna, your GAN is gonna try to imagine cars and some details. But then here is where not only you need to make some contributions on the loss part, on the objective part, you also need to make some contributions on your neural network because your neural network needs to remember some of the details. This is, so UNET, we usually use it for image segmentation. So an image goes in and a segmentation is gonna come out. You can use the same structure here. And it has shortcuts, like what you had in ResNet. So UNET is gonna be an encoder decoder architecture with shortcuts. And that's, that starts to give you better results. So what is the big lesson here? Not only you need to change your loss function, the loss function matters, you need to change your neural network structure as well. I'm sure you know about this application and uh, we are using it all the time these days. We are removing our background when we are communicating over Zoom and then we replace the background with some other stuff. So you can use this to remove the background. You can do deep fake. And basically the methodology behind deep fake is a conditional GANs. Somebody goes in and then you're gonna change that person to someone else. The schedules goes in and then you're gonna get the output. Okay, any questions about this? Yeah, in terms of math, this is not hard, but in terms of applications, you can start to see the applications of GANs now. Why do you do GANs?